Hey guys, Dark with Cycle and FPV, and it has been a week since I've done any videos at all. Uh, I will apologize to you guys. I'm getting used to a summer schedule, uh, and uh, part of it is when I get time with my kids, and so I've kind of had to come to the conclusion that when I have my boys, I get them week on, week off, uh, and when I do have them, I'm not going to be doing much videos or anything. I'm spending as much time as I can with them. So I apologize to you guys because it is putting me at somewhat of a delay on getting some videos out there, but on the flip side, I made a promise to them, and uh, to be honest with you, it's right now we're spending a lot of time bonding and enjoying some football and some other things, things that I've been waiting to start doing with them, and I'm really excited to. So uh, as much as I love the industry and I love helping you guys out, I'm sure you all understand that I'm going to start taking a few breaks during the summer every other week. So it is now Monday, June something or other. I don't know. Let me see what my phone says. It is June 24th. Uh, and that means from now until Friday, until Friday at 6 p.m., I am going to be doing videos and helping you guys out as much as I can. But once 6 p.m. comes, business will be as usual, but um, uh, I am going to uh, be not, not sitting in front of the camera or not doing too much while they're with me. Okay, so today's video is going to be kind of interesting because it is going to be covering in here. I'm going to try to put up a picture here for you. Uh, we are going to be covering, God, if I can get this to work. Uh, okay, so we are going to be covering... Uh, an unboxing, well, it's already out of the box, but basically a setup from scratch of a brand new uh, Tyrannus X9D Plus. And um, uh, I've got two modules I'm actually gonna be working with. I'm gonna be working with the R9M uh, 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 module. And I'm going to be working with the uh, TBS Crossfire. Let me get this out of mine real quick and get this going. And the reason I'm doing that is I have a customer that I was doing this for. This is actually his uh, transmitter. Uh, he just purchased it, and so we're going to be using the TBS Crossfire, and he was having some issues with it. And uh, I did go ahead and on here, uh, which you can barely see, but this actually has the Nano uh, wired on it. I did that earlier. I had a lot of testing to run on this. But what I am going to do different this time is I am going to do everything from scratch, meaning, man, I haven't downloaded any software, and if I have, I'm not using it. Uh, we are going to load this sucker from scratch and go through the steps because even when I put out a video I think is doing okay, I still have a lot of questions about stuff, and so I'm gonna to try to do it again. And this time we're gonna focus on the X90 Plus, and then we're gonna go ahead and jump back to the QX7, and then we're gonna actually jump on over to the, uh, where is it here? Somewhere in my room here is the brand new X9 lights that we just got in, um, and then we're gonna to go to the X light, okay? So we've got a lot to do, and we're gonna to try to knock this out, and I'm gonna also be referencing, as you can see over here, uh, this is our Windows screen here because I'm going to be putting the files and actually updating our website as I do the video so that I can tell you where to find the links. And I have done some changes on the website, uh, some screw-ups here. Um, sorry, let me get back to my picture at least. There. Uh, part of it was I set up the blog section, then I just had to go to a forum section. Well, at the end of the day, the forums are going to come down. It's an old method of doing things, and to be honest with you, the blog section is much easier to find on Google. So buy to the forums. They've lasted about three weeks. I don't like them, and I don't think any of y'all do either. The blog section has been better, and I am not going to be changing it again because it throws all my links off. Whew, that's a big introduction. Okay, so let's get started, right? So what we're working with first is we've got the X9D+. Plus. I'm going to get this keyboard. Oh, hell, I don't know where to put it. All right. Now, the one thing that I am not going to change is I've already downloaded OpenTX, right? And that's from the, um, uh, I'm sorry, TX Companion uh, from the OpenTX website. So um, I am going to give you guys a link to that here, and I'm going to actually work on that right now. So let me go ahead and get our website back up. And I think I already have this on somewhere, but okay, so I'm going to reference it here. And I'm, I'm just going to make notes, and I'll actually make this blog look a lot better when we're done. But for right now, it's just for notes purposes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, put a, put, start with the uh, buttons here, and I'm going to put uh, uh, step one. Uh, well, I guess I could use a number one. Oh, never mind. Download uh, OpenTX, uh, TX, open dash, I think it's TX.org, uh, TX Companion. Uh, click here for the link. All right, now let me go to OpenTX real quick. I know I already have this on my stuff, but... Uh, let me see, open, there we go. All right, so uh, what we're looking to do right now is we're looking to do the TX Companion, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and make a link for that. And uh, let me go to downloads. It should be, where am I at? Downloads. And then we're gonna go to 2.2.3. So I think what I'll do is I'll give you a link, because I don't know if this is gonna download that link right off the bat. Uh, you have to come down here. Um, but let me see how I wanna do this. Uh, I'll give you a link probably to this page only because they may be changing it uh, later on. So let's go ahead and just copy this link, okay? 
And like I said, when you get to the website, uh, click here with the link, let's do that. And I'll redo all of this later. Uh, I'm, right now my purpose is to just get this ready for you. So let's do insert link and we're gonna save it as well. This is gonna remain hidden until I'm done. And then from here, what are we gonna do? We are gonna scroll down to, we can do the SD card contents. Um, we can do the Windows installer. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go to say, uh, and then we wanna say here, um, let me do this. Uh, scroll down to find um, uh, uh, Windows Windows installer. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. I am, and and I'm gonna go ahead and make a link for that as well. So we're gonna click the Windows installer. Uh, so I'm gonna copy that link, and I think that does initiate the download. Yeah, it does. Okay. So I'm gonna put that link right, let me close this page real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna put that link right here. And I guess so, if you don't wanna to click to the page, you could at least do this, okay? And we'll do new window, insert link, and then uh, also download, uh, also download uh, 2.2.3 SD card contents. And I'll put that link here as well. All right, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, copy link. And I only think, I think that may just take you to the um, uh, download page and not necessarily the card contents, but I'm gonna go ahead and see real quick. All right, so let me just save that. And while I do that, let me, I, now I've already downloaded the companion. So I'm, I guess what I'm gonna do is, um, I'll install that campaign. Well, I've got it installed, but uh, I'll show you guys what to do. Now, if you're running a Mac, it's just pretty much the same thing, okay? Um, but let me go see what the card contents does. So let's click that real quick. I think it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna take me to a page. Okay, so obviously here, you need to select the kind of controller you're using. So we're gonna use X9D Plus. So I'm gonna copy that link, and I'm gonna put, uh, um, I'll hit a return here, and I'll just go forward a little bit. And I'll say X9D Plus plus card contents link. Let me just link that. Oops. All right, so let's just do that one for now. Now I'll probably put more of them here, but uh, at least when you go to that page, you can see all of them. All right, and you've got the X90, the X7, uh, the X Lite and so forth, okay? Uh, I don't know, do they have the X9 Lite? yet oh i know that's running two different protocols so we'll see but anyway so that's the one that we need right now so that's what we're going to deal with so uh when you get to this page if you click that link you're going to actually you're going to click this one x90 plus and it's going to be oh great now there's another one uh let's see we're going to go with the newest version which is going to be january 8th uh release of this year so let me go ahead and copy that link and um i will sub in one more time and i'm, I'm putting the rest of these uh january uh, 8th, 2019 release. I'm putting the sub links and the links, you know, that get you there because they may have an update and I may not have that update posted, let's just say. And so I want you to be able to see the actual link page as well. But if, you know, like if you're seeing this within the last few days or maybe a month or so, my link should still be good. And if they're not, please shoot me a, a message and let me know and I'll make sure to take care of it. Okay, so once you download that, um, I'm gonna click this one and we're gonna go ahead and get started. And this is the part where you need to pay attention to the video the most because a lot of what we're gonna be doing has to do with the files itself, okay? <coughs> and it's very important that you do these uh, files properly or else uh, you will run into some issues and um, you know you could find yourself kind of pissed off after a while. All right, anyways, so assuming that I did, um, assuming that I've already loaded the OpenTX, right? You're gonna end up with a program like you see in the bottom right here, uh, in the bottom, uh, sorry, in the bottom left of my screen right here. And if you click that, it's gonna open the OpenTX Companion 2.2. All right, now I don't know if the 2.2.3, uh, if that's what I downloaded is any, yeah, it's the one I have, 2.2.3. So you're gonna see something very similar to this, right? But the next thing you need to do is you need to get your radio ready. So while my system is downloading the SD card contents, let's go ahead and get started by looking at the radio itself. All right, and here we go. So here's our radio. And uh, so it's brand new. I still got the plastic on the buttons and stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that over real quick. And my advice to you is to put something underneath. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use like a battery or something. I wanna try to avoid letting those, uh, well, I guess with that it should be okay, all right. So I wanna try to make sure that we don't have too much hitting uh, against the uh, sticks here, right? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's remove the back plate. 
And this is mainly for convenience purposes and to make things a little bit easier when you're transferring these files, okay? So here's the battery that we wanna, I don't like working with these batteries, but what I'm trying to get to is to the SD card that's sitting right here, all right? Let me get this out. Okay, I want you to have that SD card out and handy, and if you can, try to locate a um, SD card reader if you can, or basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and put this card in the computer because it copies much faster when it's inside the machine. Now I've gotta find my SD card reader. Give me one second, let me see if I can uh, locate where I put mine. All right, this one will do. So here's an SD card reader. Um, if you can't do this, that's fine. You can always do it from the radio, but I promise you it's much faster if you do it the way I'm, I'm trying to uh, recommend you do it now. So go ahead and put your SD card inside, uh, and then go ahead and pop that inside the machine. And I think now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the computer itself, and I'll show you what we're gonna be working on here, okay? First thing is, we're gonna go ahead and pop the SD card in, and we're actually gonna format it, okay? And I'm gonna get the radio out of the way right now because I don't wanna knock it over, so let me go ahead and move that. All right, so uh, we see all the information here that came on the radio, but unfortunately this is probably old, and I don't want any of it on here anyway because we're about to do a, a complete uh, update, right? So the first thing is locate your SD card here on the left, and um, right click on it, and, and then just left click on format. Okay, and leave everything like it is. Now you can go to FAT, I believe you can go to FAT32 on this, um, and you can go ahead and do a quick format. So just click start. All right, format is complete. Now, that SD card is gonna remain blank. Uh, where is it? SD card right here. It, it's gonna stay blank, so just leave it in the computer and it's, uh, let it stay blank uh, for now because we are gonna be copying some files over. Uh, we got the Crossfire stuff, that was for our last download. Okay, the, the card contents for this are, are downloaded for the X90 Plus. So, what we wanna do is, now I've got, a, I've got a kind of a crowded downloads folder, so I'm gonna make a subfolder here. So I'm gonna copy this file and I'm gonna make a new folder in my documents and I do this all the time. So let me just go ahead and do documents and I'm gonna do a new folder and I'm gonna call it X9D plus. And you need to do the same thing, all right? In that X9D plus, <coughs> um, go ahead and now paste your, extra, paste your zip file from here, all right? And uh, I am assuming though, at the same time that you have gone ahead and already opened and installed your companion. So I'm not gonna cover that much because it's just an executable file, just click it and go. All right, now let's go back to our folder. X9D plus, let's go ahead now and extract it. So click extract all and extract it. And again, guys, I'm doing this from scratch. Now I have all these files already, but I, I think that maybe sometimes when I uh, miss this part or I don't show this part to you guys, it kind of throws some people off. So I figured what we'll do is we'll do it from scratch and just copy these, you know? Um, copy exactly what I'm doing and I mean, if the outcome works and you know we did it right. So I'm hoping it works, it should. I've been testing this a lot, but you know, my luck lately has not been that great. All right, so time for some cold coffee because nobody's here. My wife is gone for the day, so I'm stuck trying to make coffee. I'm not very good at it, but thank God for Keurigs. All right, <clears throat> once this is downloading, and keep in mind that if you're doing a QX7 or whatever, I'll do another video on that from the scratch, just like I'm doing this one, but the process is exactly the same. Instead of selecting the card contents for X90+, Plus, select the uh, X7 uh, card contents, and then follow the exact same things that I'm doing here, all right? Now, let's go ahead. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Uh, you can see here where it says 2,107 items, of which a gajillion of them you don't need because there are different languages, right? And I'm only gonna be doing the English language here on this video, but uh, you pick whichever language you want. Now, once you've extracted this, um, my rule is I usually get rid of it, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, man, I hate to do that to you guys though, because if you need it again. All right, so let's just do this. Leave it there where it's at, but you're gonna be using this folder here, okay? You see where it's extracted? So here's all your stuff. Here are the card contents that we want, okay? So my advice to you is to go ahead and rename this card contents. Card, uh, yeah, contents. Let's just do it like that, okay? And, and, and you have to do it this way because we're gonna be referencing this folder name in the companion file. So please follow it and just do it just like that, all right? now. As I told you, you have a bunch of um, uh, files here that are sound related, okay? If you wanna look at the total size of this, let's do a properties here, and you're gonna see that the total size is 132 megs, 136 megs, depending on how you're averaging on the byte count there. Uh, but <coughs> um, watch what happens when we get rid of the sounds we don't need. So uh, we're keeping English and I'm getting rid of everything else. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete uh, the next two. 
nobody's speaking uh, Czech here right now. All right, now with those done, I will go ahead and, um, uh, let me see, let me go back to my card contents and let's do a reading to see what the size is now. Now it's only 16 meg. So we went from 130 some odd to just 16. Okay, we got rid of all those files. This is one of the reasons I say, just put the SD card inside because if you try to synchronize <coughs> all those files through TX Companion, and you're going to be here for a while, and there are times where it could hiccup, all right? So, anyways, so there we go. That's step one. So, let me go back now to the page. Uh, let's go here. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're going to say um, uh, install, sorry, in, what the heck am I doing? Oh, I need to go over one. Okay. Uh, let me go over one. Okay, so the next thing is going to be install uh, TX Companion, uh, and then after that, um, Extract your uh, SD card contents uh, and delete all the sounds slash language folders that you no, oops, that you do not need. Okay, good. Now uh, let me click save and let's get back to what we're doing. So once we're here and our card contents, and you can save this then because really it's going to stay outside the, the folder anyway. Um, and you can always have that in case you do ruin a file or miss a file or it gets corrupted. You can always go back. Okay. So in our card, card contents, the one thing we want, what we notice right off the bat is we have the new Crossfire Lewis scripts, right? And that's one thing we're going to need because I'm going to be doing a video here shortly on uh, that TBS Crossfire, right? So that's in there. What we do not have is any firmware that we need for the controller and for any other devices or receivers. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head on over to, um, uh, let me see, this was for the TBS Crossfire and we got that information. So now we're gonna go to uh, fryskyrc.com. And I, again, I will put links for this, okay? Uh, initially I was supplying the files, but I just think it's better to do it this way. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna go check out our uh, transmitters and let's go to our uh, X9D Plus. We don't need the special edition right now. We just are looking for the X9D Plus right there. Okay, and we're gonna see what they have available. It may already be included in whatever else we're doing, but let's look at firmware. Okay, so on uh, May 28, 2018, they came out with the, uh, uh, let me see, the updates for, uh, based on OpenTX 2.2.2, uh, bootloader bug fix. Um, these are pretty old, and I'm pretty sure that uh, we don't need to load this one here. Uh, let me see, 2.2.2, and we're running 2.2.3 now, so it's really not gonna matter that much. Uh, you do have an XJT firmware, which, <coughs> uh, let me see what they've offered here. Okay, so, plus, those are production dates between, if you'd like to use the LR12 mode, no, we don't need that. Um, no, 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 okay, so as far as the Trinus X9D Plus goes, I don't think there's any firmware that we need right now, so let's skip that. What we are going to go do is um, we are going to also be using a R9M, right? Uh, you can see that. Oh, it's right here. Sorry. So we're going to be using an R9M. So if you're going to be doing that, you definitely need to go to your support uh, downloads, I mean. And I've already downloaded this file, so you make sure to download it. But uh, here goes. So we're going to go, and we are going to use the R9MM. Uh, and uh, I, am, I am doing a video on the R9 Slim and everything else, but right now, for right now, Let's just stick with the R9MM and the R9 Mini, okay? Because they're both going to run the exact same uh, firmware, I believe. But let me just find this. Uh, where am I at? Did I miss it already? I see the Mini. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I missed that. So the R9MM, uh, and here you have your firmware. And you have two kinds. You have the Flex firmware, and then you have your standard firmware. Uh, so what I've done is I contacted FrySky, and they have said that if you, to the best of their knowledge now, if you download the most recent one, then you're getting all the back ones. Now, in some cases, they did explain that's not the case. I've tested this and it seems to be working, but uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I wouldn't bet my life on it, but so far it seemed to have worked. So first thing you wanna do is um, download uh, the uh, most recent release, uh, but the old way I did this was actually download both of them and load them both. We're gonna stick with what Frysky says for now. So click your download button uh, beside this one and here comes the uh, download that we're waiting for, which is also gonna need to go into that folder for the X90 that you just created, okay? Uh, and this is, again, if you're installing the um, R9M and R9MM uh, combo, okay? So let's go ahead and click Show in Folder, and that should be right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that, and I'm gonna go to my Documents and go to my X90+, Plus, and I'm gonna paste that right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and extract it now, so click Extract All, 
and let's go ahead and get that over with. Now let me explain to you what you have in here, okay? So in this folder, you're gonna have another folder, which you don't need, so you can take that out. And now you have all your um, receivers, okay? So if you were gonna do a slim or anything, you're still using the same folder, okay? Um, but what we're not doing is we're not doing European version. So if you are doing European, keep the folders I'm about to delete. Uh, if you're not and you're using the US version, then delete these folders because these are just extra files that you don't need. So make sure to take out the LBT files and now you've got your uh, FCC fi files for the SLIM, the MINI, and the MM. And since we're working with these, um, you're going to keep these ones here. And you can keep the SLIM if you want. But what I recommend is that you cut these and go up to the original folder, right, and paste them here. Because you don't need to go from one folder right here, and then you go into this, and then you have to go again into this folder that is now empty. So get rid of the secondary folder. It's not needed at all. All right. Now, uh, on your file system, I would recommend that you change the files to be as short uh, as possible in name because there are limitations on how much file, uh, how many letters you can have in this, and there are issues where you'll load a firmware, because if you load a firmware, and I'll show you in a little bit, the names are going to be super long depending on the options you have, right? And if you do that, and the, the Tyrannus will not read all of them, and therefore you know it's on the disk, but you can't see it. So we're going to start making the names a lot smaller. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to call this R9M. Uh, yeah, let's just do this. R9M underscore uh, dash R9MM dash slim. Now, I think that's going to be short enough to work. Now, what we want to do is we want to cut this and we want to put it, paste it into our firmware folder right here. So, bam, that's right there. That's telling you that you have, uh, uh, yeah, so you have your folders for your firmware updates, okay? Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to go back and go to download and we need to download now the module update if there is one. So let's go down to our modules and let's find the R9M. That's what we're working with right there. Okay, and on our module, what we wanna do is we are going to be looking at um, our uh, firmware right here. And uh, again, we're gonna download just the most recent one and, and hope that that system does work, okay? So let's go ahead and click that and download it. And again, we're gonna take that, we'll show it in the folder and we're going to find it here and we're going to cut it and we're going to go ahead and go to downloads nope documents x90 plus and paste it and we're going to extract it okay um and so with that now i should have done this earlier is uh where am i Uh, let me see, I was on Brain FPV website. I think I have too many things open. So let me close this one. Close this one, close this one, close this one. Uh, TBS Crossfire, got all that taken care of. So what I need now is go back to the, here we go. Okay, uh, next I will say that we need to, why is this here? Okay, so now uh, go, hmm. I don't know because I was doing this for Crossfire, but um, make sure to, make sure to, sorry, let me turn my phone off. Make sure to, ah, I'll deal with this later. I won't put those here. Uh, this is obviously gonna be two different videos in one, um, and I'll send you the links for the Crossfire one as well. All right, so let's get back to our folder here. So we've got our X9D, we did our extraction, and that folder's right here. And this is for our R9M module. We're not using European, so we can get rid of the LBT one. And we have our FCC version. And here you have only two. You don't have any subfolders. So this is great. All right, so you have for the R9M and the R9M Lite, which would be on the X Lite. So let's just go, and I believe on the X, uh, that's for the X Lite, and I think the new X9 Lite uses the X Lite as well. So let's just go ahead and take that folder right here. Oh, they do have a subfolder. What the heck? Okay, I'm gonna take these and cut them then. Let me cut these and go back to the main folder, which is right here, and paste them here. Uh, so let me paste these and get rid of the subfolders. All right, and what we can do is now make this file name smaller by calling it R9M underscore R9M light. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and cut that, and we're gonna go ahead and put that in our firmware folder as well, all right? So now we've got the firmware for our R9M, R9M Lite, and so forth. 
Uh, and I know we're going to be discussing TBS here, but this is also important because I want to cover it all at one time. All right. So um, I need to get my uh, notifications to not pop up on here, I guess, as that's going to drive me nuts. Let me see how I do that. Sorry. One second. Let me go to here and go to settings and go to where is that notification somewhere around here. I'll find it. I'll find it. I cannot find it. Ah, come on, this thing's going to go here. There's is more. Okay. Advanced. Anything here? Nope. Wonderful. So I don't know. Uh, appearance? No. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, I was hoping to stop this so that you don't have to see that every time we're working. Uh, but I'll figure it out later. So let me just get out of here and close this down. Okay. So now that we're done with this, let's go back to our, um, wait, is this how you do it? Let me see if I can do this. Let me go to settings. There we go. Uh, go to Chrome, go to notification settings. There we go. And what do we do? We want to block, oh, I don't know. Let me see. Let me see how this works. Turn off all notifications for, yeah, perfect. Okay, so there we go. That should take care of it for now. All right, so sorry about that. Uh, so now that we're here, uh, we're in our folder and we are building up our firmware folder and it is all looking good. Uh, so we have our scripts for our um, uh, Crossfire and we have our firmware for our uh, R9M and R9MM. So really, when we put this SD card back in, we should be set to go, right? So <clears throat> now that our card contents are set, uh, we need to go ahead and get our radio back into the companion, right? So, and, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and copy. I need to close all these screens out now because I don't need them all open. Okay, so let me close that, let me close this. And let's go back to my documents folder. We can close the Fry Sky folder. And uh, okay, so now what we wanna do is we are going to go to our X90 folder and our card contents. And we are gonna copy that entire card contents folder, not the name card contents. So sorry, you're gonna copy the stuff inside it, right? So right click on all the contents in here and then go to your SD card left click and go to paste now what you're bringing over is everything we've just done we've removed all the files that's a new SD card contents folder and we've added firmware to the firmware folder so really once we copy this over we don't have to worry about doing it again but I'm gonna show you how to synchronize that um, with uh, uh, your uh, OpenTX software okay so while we're doing that I am gonna go ahead and get this uh, ready so let's do that and we're waiting for the, uh, now I need to make sure I have my uh, USB cable as well. Okay, I think that is the one that I'm using, which is right here. Make sure you have your data cable ready. All right. Um, that's the right one. Yeah, that's the right one. Okay. And I'm going to leave the battery out because I may have to disconnect it every once in a while. Okay, so now we know that our card contents folder is done. So what you want to do now is go ahead and close it out um, and just right click and left click on eject. Okay. Let's go ahead and remove it. And uh, what we're gonna do now, now we don't need to see the computer screen right now, we're gonna go ahead and pop that sucker right back in to the bottom here. There you go. And now our card contents folder, our SD card is set. Um, I do need to get rid of some of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this plastic off. Okay. Now uh, there's a couple other pieces of plastic on here, but anyways, here we go, right? Now get the sugar rush out of the way. Everything looks good, okay. So what we want to do now, and I hope there's enough battery to do this, it's not, I'm going to go grab a battery real quick. But what you want to do now is you want to get this uh, uh, into DFU mode, basically. So you're going to hold your two sub trims in, which are right here, push them to the center, and flip open your power, and then let go. And here's what you want to look at. Your Tyrannus bootloader is 2.1.6. It's very uh, old, okay? Um, and so we're going to update that. And part of that update is coming from the SD card that we just did. And so <coughs> what we want to do first is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to see if I can go in this order. The first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and click uh, to write the firmware. Okay, whoops. Click to write the firmware. Uh, oh, we can't read the directory. That's right, because we haven't done the update yet. So let me go ahead and we're going to use it through OpenTX, okay, instead. So when you're at this screen here, just go ahead and plug in your USB cable. Now, I need to switch over then and now show you uh, this and this and there we go okay so our radio now says get this battery is sitting here properly uh, 
if I can put this on something here. I'll use the Emergen RC box. There we go. The way it's not pressing on my uh, on my USB cable. Okay, and so you can see the card con you can see the contents of your SD card file right here because it's going to pop open in Windows. And there's that folder that we created with all our stuff, right? Now, we have to tell OpenTX where the location of everything is. So let me minimize this. And here we are with our OpenTX. The first thing you want to do in here, and I should be typing this, and I will because it's really critical. If you don't do this, it's going to mess up. So let's go ahead and let me type while we're doing this. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to Settings, and you want to go to um, uh, uh, Radio Profiles, okay? And you want to add, now I have mine already set up, but you're creating a new one, so we're going to say Add Radio Profile. And we're going to call this one, uh, I'll type this later. If you watch a video, it'll work out just fine. So we're going to call this one, um, uh, let's just call it X9D+. Plus. It doesn't matter at this point, but let's just call it X9D+. Plus. X9D+, Plus, okay? And in this X9D+, Plus, you want to get the following. Uh, you're going to run Lewis scripts. Uh, you're going to run, uh, uh, you're not running EU. You're not running European. You're, you're going to use no heli. You can use a new font, and you want the new Flex uh, uh, R9M option so that you can run Flex and, uh, and and it can support the flex firmware, which is going to allow you to. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I'm having brain freeze. Uh, the flex firmware is going to allow you to interact with the new flex updates from uh, FrySky, uh, which we're not covering right now. Okay, but um, they will. It, it, the flex firmware allows you to increase the power of the uh, module and the radio and um, and the receiver, and therefore you can get uh, much uh, much power because I think you're going to get. 10 milliwatts by default on this when you turn it on. I think you can go up to one watt or 1,000 milliwatts. Um, and uh, so that's what the Flex Firmware is for. But I'm not messing with that right now. Right now I'm just kind of helping you with this and then also getting the Crossfire stuff ready, which is why you need the Lewis scripts on here, okay? So, um, sorry, I didn't mean to deviate from what we're working on here. Leave everything else like it is. Uh, so the SD structure path, this is part that's important. Go ahead and click Select Folder and then find that folder that we created in the documents called x 90 Plus. And there's your card contents folder right there. And double click it so that it says folders card contents and click select folder. On your backup folder, <coughs> go back to your documents, uh, documents, and then X90 plus, and then create a new folder, uh, click new folder and just call it backup. Okay, hit enter, and then select that folder, and then click select folder here. Now it's gonna put all your backups there. Uh, enable automatic backups before you're writing new firmware. I recommend you do this, and there's no harm in it, so might as well go ahead and do it. Uh, default, we're running mode 2. Default channel or order is T-A-E-R, right there. And uh, and uh, let me see. We will offer to write the firmware after download, and I'm not going to worry about using the firmware uh, name. Now go to your application settings. Um, one thing is you are not going to be using... Um, where is it here? Uh, Okay, see where it says release is stable? Do not use the other ones right now. Please just stick with stable. Leave everything else exactly how it is. And then you could select your back. Now here, because I have another radio that I use on this computer, uh, change your auto backup folder and make sure that it goes as well to your documents, uh, to your backup folder right here. Click select folder. And you want to enable automatic backup, blah, 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 and you're done. So lift this up and click OK. So just take a look at this one more time. Three check marks, use release, first dot, Second, uh, first check mark here, find your backup folder, enable it, leave everything else alone, go to the first page, and you name your, name your stuff. Make sure your radio dropdown is X9D+. You have got to select the right radio or it's a worthless uh, effort here. So, and then um, the language is going to be English, and then you check, no heli, Luac C, Luac, uh, sorry, Luac and Lua, and the, square, uh, the new font, the new font, which is a square font, um, and then the uh, Flex uh, R9M, Update, put your card contents folder, your backup, enable automatic backups, mode two, T-A-E-R, offer to write it, don't worry about the file name and click okay, boom, that's it. Holy crap, sorry, I'm rambling, but there you go. So now when you go to settings and you select radio profile, make sure to select X9, X90 plus, and that is also if you have different radios, okay? So with this set, we wanna download our update. This, this um, uh, button right here that says download, click it. And it's telling you that everything you selected, meaning it's an X9D+, plus, uh, you want the Luax scripts, you want Flex uh, R9M, you want the new font, and you want it in English, this is the firmware that they put together with your selection. You need to select it. So click Check for Updates, and it's going to tell you, okay, so as of right now, there's no updates, 
we're going to go ahead and click our download firmware. All right. <clears throat> and we're going to put it somewhere in our folder. So because this is defaulting to mine, let's go to documents. Let's go to X90 plus. Let's go to cart. Uh, well, you can actually go right here and then go to your firmware. And in here, take this is the long file name I was talking about where when you do all your selections, it finds and makes this huge file name. Change this. Leave the dot bin. OK, don't mess with that. But just change the rest of this and just put today's date or something. So just put like uh, X9D uh, firmware uh, 06 2419. Enter. OK, and let it download. And now it's going to ask you if you want to write it to the radio. Click yes. Done. So here goes right here. And it's going to check hardware compatibility and click right to TX. And you can watch it in the background here. I don't know why they do this, but they put this piece behind it. OK, so it has its flashing is done. You can click close. Uh, let me click OK here first. Click close. Now your radio has been flashed. But as you can see on your screen, which I'll show you here real quickly, uh, it says to you right here, you're still running bootloader. Sorry, let me tilt this up. 2.1.6. Well, we just upgraded our firmware to 2.2.3. All right. So let's go ahead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's do this. So let me do this here. Sorry, bear with me a second. There we go. And let's make this to where you can see it more. OK, so at this point, as of right now, we're pretty much done with the first part of what we need to do, except we want to go ahead and write that firmware to our card now, right? Because remember, we took our card out. We did it on the computer. We put it back in. And now what we want to do is we want to synchronize what's on the computer and the SD card contents with what's on the radio and our SD card contents, right? So here we go. You click this, um, this, this box right here, right, that has the picture of an SD card. Click it. And it's going to tell you. Now, if you want to run a test, you can run a test first and click that test only. You want to do both directions, OK? And, um, and so it's got my X9D Plus right here, my card contents. And it's got my D. So I'm going to click OK. And we're going to watch. And if I'm not mistaken, there's only going to be one file to copy, which is going to be that firmware. So it's going to run through all of these. But let's just see what it says in return. And, and it takes a second here. So hang tight. Now, this is just checking the files. If you had to sit here and watch them get written, it would take forever, especially if you didn't delete the um, sounds folder. All right. So we're going to wait, wait, wait. Good Lord, we're just gonna wait a little bit longer. I, actually, you know what? I need to see if my, I think my wife just called me. So let me just check and make sure. Almost done. The silence is awesome. Now, this is a test run, right? So I have to do it for real afterwards, all right? But I usually do a test run just to make sure there's no error. So click Close, and then do it again. And this time, remove Test, and click OK. And that's how much faster it'll go now. Uh, no errors. It did one file, OK? I skipped the rest because they're all the same. And now our, our, our uh, firmware file is now on our radio as well, OK? so. With that done, um, what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and flash our bootloader real quick. And I'm going to show you how to do that, OK? So let's go ahead and do this. Let me do this real quick. There we go. OK, so first thing we want to do is, whoops. First thing we want to do is I want you to come down to your um, uh, USB icon right here and right click on it and start ejecting the um, devices. And there's going to be two of them, OK? So you need to eject the Tyrannus drive and then the drive D, OK? And once you've done that, you are golden. You can now unplug your radio. And you're going to end up going right back to the right firmware, the, the main screen you were at before. Scroll up, hit enter. Whoops, let me go ahead and exit out of this. Sorry. OK, so our data is wrong here. That's OK. And it's going to convert. So once you get out, you're going to see that error. And then as soon as you exit, it's going to automatically do the update for you. Switch warning. It's very loud right now. OK, so fail safe isn't said. That's fine. <coughs> so now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the uh, machine off, go back into our DFU mode here, and we're going to, uh, oh my gosh, I'm doing this all wrong. Let me get exit. Sorry. Uh, go ahead and go to your uh, main screen here. Hold your menu button down. Hit page once. Go to firmware. And find your firmware right here that we did. Hit enter. And say flash bootloader. And there you go. And it, uh, it automatically did it, OK? So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and 
turn this off. And now you can see our bootloader has been updated. I don't know if you can see that, sorry. Um, and you can see it is now uploaded to version 2.2.3 and you are good to go, okay? And now it can read our file. The reason it couldn't read it before, I zoomed in too much, is because we didn't have the bootloader updated and now we do. So again, once you, once you um, have done your OpenTX, all right, hold on, let me get out of this real quick, go to exit. Once you've done your OpenTX, uh, the companion, and you get back to your radio, if you want to flash your bootloader, just hold your menu button down, hit page, go to your firmware, find it, which is right there because that's what we named it, and then hit enter, and it'll say you want to flash bootloader. Now I already did that, so we're done, and we're good to go. Our radio is now officially ready to go. All right, We have no model set up or anything like that, but we have now all the firmware that we need, and now we can start setting it up. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and start with the... Um, uh, TBS Crossfire because this one is going to one of my customers and I promised him that we would do that, okay? So first thing on the TBS Crossfire is these are kind of a pain to install, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it going here real quick. All right. Now on the back of this radio, and let me zoom out just a little bit more so you can see a little bit better. So on the back of this radio, you have your slots for the pins, right? And let me use this. So here's your slots for the pins right here. The one thing you have to be careful of is sometimes they just don't line up that great with the pins that are in here, that you can see right here, okay? But they have to fit in there, right? You don't need to add an external battery right now or anything else like that, but you've got to get this to fit in here properly. So try to line it up, and if you feel any force fighting back, just kind of wiggle it to where it gets in place. Snaps in perfect, now we're done. On the QX7, I had a little bit more of a hard time with this. Now here's where the dilemma was. Um, the reason we're going through this is because uh, he could not get this to communicate properly on his. Turns out it was a firmware issue. So before you do anything else, it is critical that you um, do your firmware update. And I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do for that. Okay, so let me let me uh, let me do a screen here real quick. And now what we're going to do is we're going to end up using TBS as software. Okay, so if you're using the TBS uh, Crossfire, you have got to um, I've got to find it here real quick. So let me just type TBS T. Where's the B? There it is, TBS Agent. You want to click that, and you need to have that running, all right? You, you also are going to need to use basically the same style USB cable uh, that you would use to connect to your um, uh, flight controller, and you're going to plug that in the side of your module right here because you've got to do your updates. Now, I did the updates already, so there's really not going to be much for me to show you, but just pay attention here. So the, do not have your unstable releases selected, okay? Make sure that you have uh, the other ones. And TBS did say, and that's why I was looking on their site earlier, that they do require you um, to, uh, whatchamacallit? Hold on a second, sorry, I am, I'm trying to get these screens right. Okay, so TBS did say that they require you to do your update if you're gonna be using uh, the, the Nano here, which is what we've got on this board right here, and this system with all the updates. You've gotta do your firmware. If not, there's gonna be a couple problems, and I made some notes of things that we're gonna correct here. But let's get started. So I was going to actually try to downgrade this, and um, uh, you know it's not worth it. Just go ahead and keep your updates, and make sure you've got 2.4.2 selected um, on your updates. And I think what I did is I went to 2.2.4 because on their website they said that was the minimum you had to have. Uh, and then as I did that, and it was done, and it keeps updating a lot of things, and it'll restart. Then it said, well, hey, now you have 2.2.4. You need 2.4.2, which is the newest one. So just do it. Go to Crossfire 2.4.2, click your update. I'm gonna do it again. See, it already says it's up to date. I'm not gonna flash it a second time around because it's already been done, but just flash it and let it do what it's doing, okay? But now here's the catch. Once you do that, and let me go ahead and um, get my ugly mug off of this. Uh, okay, so you've seen the TBS software. So once you do that and you're done, you're gonna disconnect your uh, cable, right? So you're gonna pull the cable out. You can see right here, everything's reading on the screen. You can pull the cable out. All right, and you're done. Except you now have to flash the receiver. So to do that, what you're gonna do is you're going to, I'm gonna set up this model for TBS. So let's go ahead and turn on our radio and we're just gonna do a quick, a quick, quick, quick model setup real quick. Okay, with our new uh, X9D. Darn it. Get in there. Okay. One day it'll actually sit properly. There we go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Welcome to OpenTX. It's going to be rather loud, which you can change. So, and the screen's kind of weird. It's it's really dark. So I'm going to go to I'm going to hold down menu, 
And I'm going to go and try to set up so that my screen is not so dark and my volume is not so loud. So let me go ahead and find volume right here. And you see, you can't read it because the screen is so blue. Uh, let me go ahead and change the uh, uh, screen here. Where is it? Contrast. Is that it? No. My, my apologies. Oh, backlight. Here we go. So brightness. Let's go ahead and just drop that down a little bit. All right, because you need to be able to read it. And there, now it's starting to become a little bit more uh, readable, I guess, here. There we go. So let's do that. And that's that's in the menu settings. That should, uh, that should uh, work out pretty good. Uh, and then let's see. I don't know what color I want to change it to. I don't think I'm going to mess with it much, but I think you can read it better like that. And you can always adjust this as you want. I just don't want there to be uh, stuff interfering. Okay, so we are good to go here. We've got everything set up. We've got all that done. So we're going to set up our model. So here's our page right here for our model. And we want to go ahead and hit page, uh, sorry, um, hit menu. And there's our model right there, model 01, which you can see. And what we want to do is we want to get that set up to work with this TBS, right? So we're going to go into our model and we're going to hit menu, sorry, and page, and we're going to name it. So I'm just going to name this one TBS. So I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to scroll up. Hold enter down if you want to go caps. Okay, so we're just going to call it TBS, okay? And then I'm going to hit exit when I'm done typing. And I'm just going to use the plus arrow because I want to go backwards, it's quicker. So what I want to do is, the first thing I want to do is, I want to go ahead and select, because right now I have my, as you can see here, it says my internal is uh, is set up, right? So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, see how it says internal RF, and it says mode D16. Okay, yeah, that's not what I want. Um, what I want to do is I want to go and turn my internal off because I'm actually going to uh, be running the crossfire. So press your enter button until it starts blinking, and then just press your minus button until it goes to off, and then hit enter again, and you're good. External, we want to go... Uh, to our CRSF, which stands for crossfire. So make sure you turn your external on. And um, that's pretty much it. You're good to go. I'm not going to mess with anything else on that side. But now what you'll see is when we do this, our crossfire now lights up. Uh, sorry, I got to get that on there. You see now we have power. Because we did our external to crossfire, we now have power. So let me zoom out now. So the crossfire is now done. Now here's what's going to happen. Uh, you are going to need to now bind to your... Now, I've already bound this, but I'm going to do it again anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and power this up. Make sure we have no shorts here or nothing that's going to get surged out. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and bind this up. So I'm going to turn this on. Okay? And get this stupid antenna out of the way. All right. So in this case, here's our, here's our Nano right here. All right? If you guys can see that. And on our, on our screen here, it's going to say that we're, we're linked, but I want, to, I want to not link it anymore. So here's our bind button right near the uh, antenna. Let me see if I can show you that. So here's our bind button right here. I'm going to press it. Hold on. Let me get this. i got to get a good... Okay, so right now it's, bind, it's, it's looking to bind. I don't know if you can see this, but it's blinking green, so it's trying to bind, right? So once you get this into binding mode like it is now, um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to press and hold the button in the center. All right. And when you do that, you're going to get your menu here, which says general, set, fail, safe, bind, and head tracker, etc. So just click bind, and it's going to say binding. And now you've got a green light on the top here, and you've got a solid green light below right here. Okay. And you're good to go. So it says RX Nano, and uh, you can hit that, and you can tell it exactly what you want it to do here. Telemetry is on. Uh, and so forth. Now you're going to be able to do this also from the screen on the X90 Plus, but I kind of want to show you how to do it here. If you've already got this facing you, this shouldn't be an issue. So with that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get out of this. And now we're going to turn the radio around. And what we can see and what I'll show you is the exact same thing that you would have seen. I'm going to move this now out of the way. And what you're going to see here is uh, the screen uh, as you would normally see it. And uh, what you can notice here is right off the bat, you've got your uh, antenna signal strength, uh, you've got your battery meter, I'm sorry, your RSSI and your battery meter. Um, and so what we want to do now is we're going to just go ahead and click on uh, menu, hold it down, click page, and you see how you have your crossfire uh, setting here. 
I've got it. You know what? Let me. I'm going to change the contrast here because this is driving me nuts. I don't think this is uh, coming up any better this way. So let me just see what I can do here. No, it's the other way, I think, I guess. Yeah, there we go. And then let me do that. See if I can make this screen brighter. But it needs to be able to where you can read it, I guess. I think that works out better. I don't know. We'll keep it like that. That should be bright, but not have any issues. I guess I can make it to where there's no color at all. And then if I go to brightness, I can make it super bright. You should be able to. Yes, much better. All right, so let's do that. I think that's going to make it easier uh, to, to see, but then we'll deal with it later. Okay, so getting back to this now, the same thing can be done if you go, what I just did on the back of that uh, crossfire is the same thing we could do here. If you hold menu down, you get to your main screen, press page, and then go hit crossfire, hit enter, and then click this, uh, and then hold your enter key down, then hit execute. And you're going to see where you've got transmitter and you've got your new nano, right? So if you click the nano, give it a second to load, and it's going to show you everything that you need to do here. Uh, and so you've got telemetry on. It's going to fill these in for you. So you've got the eight channel mode. Telemetry is on. Uh, we do not have Mavlink on a fail safe mode. It's going to cut it. And then what we know is that channel one and channel two, TX from here and then the RX. So you're going to wire those up accordingly. Um, we are going to be using the CSRF or CRSF uh, protocol instead of SBUS. Uh, and so what that means is channel one is going to go to your um, like your S bus port or what have you. Channel two is going to go to your uh, receiving port. Okay, uh, so uh, here's what we do. I'm sorry, it's going to go to your transmit port. So these are your uh, your channel one output is your TX. It's going to go to the RX on your board. Uh, and so in that case, if you're running like an F4, uh, since this is inverted, I believe this is inverted. Let me check my notes on this one. Uh, it is not inverted. Therefore, you are not gonna put it in an SBUS port. On F3, you can, and that's what I'm running here, so it's fine if I put the uh, Crossfire protocol on the SBUS port, but if you don't have it and you have an F4, uh, which is uh, running inverted, then you need to put it on a UART, okay? So don't put it on the SBUS port. Just find a UART, like UART2, UART3, and then you're gonna use the TX and RX for telemetry and for this. So your channel one from your transmitter will go, or for your receiver, will go to your RX, uh, and because uh, it's receiving the signal and then your channel 2 which is going to go to your TX on your board which is going to receive your telemetry. hope that helps. Now you want to set up your um, LQ protocol which is going to be on channel 8 as you can see here and I've already set this up and then in beta flight you'll set it up on channel 12 which we'll get into later. Now the one thing that was a problem here was getting everything set up so that it received telemetry and so I, that's what we were working on. So what we did and what I did is I worked on this. Um, so what we're going to do now is you're going to go to, uh, you're going to press menu, get to your main me menu selection of your quad, and then press page and hold it down and press page again. And now you're at your telemetry screen, right? What I would do here is I would go ahead and click delete all sensors. All right. And let me see, did it do it? I believe. I don't know why I'm not, I, it really shouldn't be there, but, oh yeah, sorry, just hold it down and then hold enter to delete them. And, and the reason being is not all the sensors that come default are gonna actually load now. So we did a delete of all sensors, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug my flight controller into uh, beta flight. And I'm gonna show you what we did to make those setting changes there. And let me open beta flight up and then I'll share the screen with you. So here it goes. Here's a beta flight screen and here is our transmitter screen. Uh, let's do it like that, okay? I think it's probably better if we did these side by side. So let's try it like this. There, let's try that. All right, so in beta flight, when we log in, now, I'm, like I said, I'm using an F3 board, so let's not worry about it. But I do have my port set up. So my serial RX, this is not necessary. Uh, my serial RX is set for UART3 because on this F3 board, the S bus goes into serial RX on uh, UART3. Okay, so let me just save and reboot. And um, now what we wanna do is we're gonna go to our configuration tab. And on our configuration tab, uh, we did select to have serial-based CRSF, and we do have telemetry activated here. 
Um, and that is pretty much about it on this side. So let's go ahead and see if we can get telemetry going. We want to click discover new sensors and all of a sudden there's everything on there. Now I will tell you that uh, if you do not have the firmware update, you will not get it to work. You have got to have that firmware update that we did using the TBS um, software and it has to update on both of them. And that's it guys. At that point, this thing's ready to go. If you go to your receiver tab and you see, now I haven't calibrated this uh, controller yet, but as you can see, we're getting full movement. So everything's good to go. Um, and we are getting full RSSI um, uh, feedback on this and it is looking excellent. Uh, so that's it. I hope that helps. That's how we do the TBS side of things and it is good to go. All right. Now that ends this part of the video and I'm going to, I guess, pause it here, take a break, come back and do the section on the R9M. I'm going to run them together, which means right now, if you don't want to see the R9M, stop the video. Okay. And I appreciate though your support. Please make sure to like uh, us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube. Oh wait, I have these things. Boom. See that right there? I think you can see that. It's like, it should be right below there. There's there Cyclone FPV, right? So then, and then this one, that one. I'm pointing, but I can't see it. So I'm hoping it's there or else it's even worse. Okay, that's it for right now. Uh, but I am going to continue with the R9M, R9M module here in just a second. Um, and that is how you do everything. You can stop discovering now and you are good to go. Uh, and I think that's it, guys. All right, if you need anything else, hit me up. Uh, again, it's Tark at CycloneFPV.com. Video is going to end here. I'm going to go ahead and edit this in just a minute. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, see you guys. Bye. Hi guys, it's Tarko Cycle and FPV, and now I'm getting ready to start the second part of the video. The first part of the video was setting up the uh, the uh, RX, or sorry, the X9D Plus, where and, and using the um, Crossfire setup. I still have the uh, receiver, the Nano receiver, sitting right here. I've got to take that off the board now. Uh, and what we're going to be doing now is finishing the video by doing the R9M setup, <clears throat> which I've gone ahead and already inserted into the computer, uh, into the uh, transmitter. I did make some changes while we were while I wasn't uh, doing this video and I wanted to test some things out. So it was going to be uh, kind of cool to show you a couple of things that I tested out uh, that I hadn't really had a chance to do before. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I'm running the right firmware because I was doing a firmware check um, uh, earlier and uh, I was playing with different firmware on here. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and reflash this uh, to what we uh, had on here prior to the video ending because I wanted to, um, I created a, uh, I created a, uh, a folder to try to test some different firmware and see what the problem would be and it definitely wasn't uh, my favorite option here. So let me just go ahead and um, reflash this real quick just and, and you don't have to worry about this part. This is, whoops, I haven't even plugged this, this stupid remote in yet, my bad. Um, this is something we've already done. I, like I said, I was just messing around with it because I wanted to test some, uh, I wanted to brick it, test it and get it out of being bricked and so forth. All right, so um, right now what I'm going to do is uh, I had already downgraded it back to 2.2.2 and we know we're running 2.2.3. Um, again, that was just part of my testing on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and load the firmware again the same way we did it the first time. Oops, I don't know what I'm doing here. I apologize. Uh, let me go right here. So I'm kind of losing my mind a little bit. Here we go. Going to write it. All right, and that's 100% done. And then what we want to do is upload the bootloader or update the bootloader when we're done. And I've already shown you how to do that at the beginning of this video, but since I have to do it again anyway, might as well just knock it out together. So let me go ahead and inject this. Uh, what's wrong? USB is current. Okay, sorry. Let me go ahead and inject the first one. There we go. And then let me go ahead and inject the second one. Uh, okay, let's try again. Let's say it's in use, and that's probably because of the second OpenTX that I tried to open the file. Um, so let me just go ahead and close this out and cancel and then we'll eject it now. All right, so we've got the radio out. Sorry about that, that was just a little glitch on my part. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out here. And so we can see now that we have our, um, we're right back at the screen where we pull the USB out. We're gonna go ahead and go to exit. Uh, whoops, 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 go to exit. Welcome to our TX. Okay. Warning. Yeah, yeah, okay. So now I have to go ahead and flash the bootloader. So I'm gonna hold menu down until I get to here. Press page one time. Go down to firmware and then go down to the uh, uh, update that's right here. 
and I'm gonna flash the bootloader, and let it go real quick, it only takes a second. And then you'll see that when I turn this off, if I go back into like DFU, you're gonna see where it says, now I'm back to 2.2.3 at the top, okay? So we're good there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and, and get the part of the R9M working. So I've already uh, done this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it now so you guys can see it. So on the R9M, we need to go ahead and flash it. The whole first thing to do is to um, hold the uh, menu button down, long press, then press page one time, go to firmware, and then go to the folder we created called R9M, uh, R9M Lite, um, and, whoops, and just press it quickly. Sorry, there's a little gnat flying right here. And then find the R9M underscore FCC, long press it, and then press uh, flash external module. Okay, so go ahead and do that. And it's gonna run through the update, and you're gonna see the light blinking back here, uh, and that means it's getting data. Okay, now while that's going on, I'm gonna go ahead and desolder the um, Nano from the uh, board, and what you'll see here that I did while I was uh, you know, just kinda hanging out, was I went ahead and soldered, because this was a used R9MM uh, receiver, I went ahead and just soldered the update pins, uh, the wiring to it, uh, and what I was testing was actually updating the firmware directly from the back of the R9M module, so I don't have to take it off and go to the pins, and it looked like it worked. I hadn't done it before. I decided to try it this time. I'm kind of an old school. I just stick with the same habit, which was take the module out, plug it to the pins on the bottom and the back and see if that works. But in this case, this actually works without having to do that. It seems like it did. So I'm going to do it again, show you guys, and uh, we'll test and see if it works. At the same time, we'll get this crossfire set up uh, to ship back out. I'm going to go ahead and detach the cables. Uh, so let me go do that. And uh, guys, one thing that I was saying before, and I want to make sure you understood was, on this particular board, this is a HDLRC F3 V4 board. Um, because it's an F3 board, the board can run inverted and uninverted on the S bus port. Uh, so I was able to use that without having to use a separate UART. Please, if you're running a, a UART, uh, if you're running an F4 board, for example, you will not be able to do that. So you do need to find a UART that's available uh, and, and not use the S bus option. Uh, so just to give you a heads up, that's the only reason I was able to get away with it here, okay? Um, so on F3 you can, but on F4 you cannot. Uh, in most F4s you cannot at least. All right, so there is the Nano, and that is going to be packed up and sent back with the Crossfire and this module, I mean, and this receiver. All right, so our update's done right here. And now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and exit out and get to the two dots here and hit enter. And now what we need to do is update our uh, receiver. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay, now that we've got the, uh, now that we've got, I've had to cut this video because I've been trying so many different things and a lot of them have not been working, meaning I'm just experimenting based on what people email me. Hey, try this and try this. And it's delaying everything, but it's worth trying. So let me tell you what I've just did and I'm gonna, uh, it's, it's been edited out by the time you watch this. But I decided, somebody wanted to know how successful it was to be able to, or was it possible to go ahead and update the uh, firmware on the receiver by patching it in to here on the right side where it's a ground, positive, and, and smart port. And I was like, well, you know, I really don't know. Let's give it a shot. Okay, well, I did it. And it looked like it worked, but it didn't. What it ended up doing was messing up my module. So I've had to go ahead and reflash my module, which I did. So the module is back to normal now. All right. And now it's time to do the receiver. Uh, and so because I, I'm going to go back to the old school way of doing it and keep in mind that the X9D plus wiring is different than the X Lite, okay? Um, or sorry, the QX7 and the X Lite. So in this case, when you take the module out, you're going to see these five pins, right? And this is where the module plugs into. Please pay close attention to this so you don't ruin your equipment. The top two pins are not to mess with. Leave them alone. You don't need them for this, what we're doing next. The bottom three pins is what we're using to update the firmware on here. And to do that, you're gonna put it in the following order. And this is where it differs from the other ones. The wiring diagram on a QX7, for example, is from left to right, and it's black, red, yellow. Uh, on the X9D, and since we're going in a vertical instead of horizontal pins, we start from the bottom. The bottom one is gonna be yellow, which is your smart port. Then you're gonna go black, which is your ground. And then you're gonna go with red, which is your positive. Do not mess those up and don't put them on the wrong pins. So. Look at your six, look at your five pins like I have here, all right, and start from the bottom and plug in the yellow, the black, and then the red, and it should look just like that, okay? And please make sure that you have it done that way with the two top pins not being used. Once you've done that, go ahead and turn on your transmitter. And um, what we want to do now 
is we want to go ahead and flash this. So we're going to go ahead and hold the menu button down, press page, go down to, uh, oops, go down to firmware, uh, menu, page, firmware, and then we're going to find the folder we created called R9M, R9MM, and Slim. Okay, so let's go to that one, and then let's go to um, uh, R, uh, R9Mini, press that, and then let's do the R9Mini FCC. I'm not going to run F ports, I'll just do this one. And we want to make sure that when we long press it, we then select flash external device or a flash, ex flash external module. It used to be flash external device. I don't know why it's changed, uh, but at one point it was flash external device. Now you can see here, uh, the light is blinking, so we are getting the data update, so that's good. Um, our module is ready, so that's good. So all we need to do is wait for this thing to get done writing. Then we're gonna go ahead and give it some power through the DC to, or AC to DC converter. Uh, I'm not gonna wire it to the board because this thing is about setting up the equipment as far as out of the box, getting the firmware and everything. Uh, setting it up, I've done videos on that one and I'll send you some links if you need, or if you need a new one, let me know. Uh, but um, so I, I'm eating chips, by the way, because I'm kind of hungry. Um, so this is almost done writing. Once it's done, we're going to be able to bind it. I'll show you guys how that works, and then you're set. Uh, so going over some of the errors that people make. And me, I'm experimenting with this stuff, so I'm always making errors, trying to find out what's available, what has been released, what's in the firmware. Um, one of the things I've seen is people trying to flash internal devices or modules when it's, when it's supposed to be external, and you can brick your controller that way, and we'll go over how to unbrick it in another video. Uh, the other thing is, is people are grabbing the wrong firmware and trying to load it on the receiver, then the receiver's not working and people are saying, hey, it's broken receiver, and it's not. It was actually a user error that caused it, and it's not even broken. You can still fix it, but you have to work a little harder at it. Um, so please, by all means, when you start trying to update your R9M and your R9MM or whatever it is, be very specific. To use, use the right software. Go to our website. Check it out. We usually have links to all the software that you need. Um, and then make sure to pay attention to the external versus internal option when you flash because I've done it too. It's an accident as I'm hurrying through. The first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and hold our bind button down, right, which is right next to the antenna. Press it till it clicks right there and then flip on your power source. And so what you're going to see here is you're going to see the green and the red light lit up together. Now on the X9D+, Plus, what you want to do is you want to hit menu one time, then page. And then you want to scroll up and find your bind option here. And you want to make sure your internal uh, RF is off so that you can use telemetry with this because if you have that on you won't be able to use telemetry and what we're going to do is click bind and what you're going to see now is this red light is blinking quickly I don't know if you can see that on the screen but you'll just have to take my word for it it's blinking quickly I think it's, the cameras aren't picking it up so now that it's blinking quickly I'm going to go ahead and exit on the radio exit again then exit one more time then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, uh, AC to DC converter telemetry and the radio off. should talk which it is right now okay so it's, and now I'm gonna turn it back on. Telemetry recovered. And that means our telemetry, our telemetry is good. All the firmware seemed to have worked fine. Everything's looking good. It just took a little while, while because of the pins. But uh, as far as it goes now, everything looks very clean. Um, and you're ready to fly. So, um, and you've got your RSSI signal here. It looks good. So everything's done. So there you go. <clears throat> Sorry, it was a painful process today because I, there was a lot of experimenting to do with the different connections and, and different ways to do a firmware update. But this is how it is done. The f information can be found on CycloneFPV.com's website. Uh, go into our blog section or our news section with our tutorials and uh, locate the X90 Plus setting up a TBS crossfire and setting up the uh, R9M and R9MM receiver. All right. If you have any questions, hit me up at Tark at CycloneFPV.com. Uh, as always, I appreciate it. And uh, let me get my ugly mug off your face. Uh, all right, guys, target cycle at appreciate all your business. God bless, uh, fly safe, and we'll talk to you soon.